Okay, so what I need to do next is to log in and set up my two terminals that I was using in the previous video. Oh, but not as root because I've got a user now. So that's my first terminal where I'll, where I'll be putting in the commands and in the second terminal I'll get to by all F2. I'll log in again. And I'll get a Lynx browser up. Okay, I've never run Lynx as this user before, obviously, so it's not in the history. So I'll just type in the website forward slash BLFS. And go down to read online and go to the next page and take the first link the latest release BLFS book and I want to find um, unzip yes yeah, so I'm not sure I'm searching this might be for, yes it's forward slash so I'll just type in unzip see if it's case sensitive it isn't so that's helpful so it's highlighted unzip I'll just press enter and I'll go into that page So if we read this on the web page, it's easy to read. Um, it says about there's um, certain issues um, about non-ASCII characters in the file name and um, what that's about. So it, it says that some file, file names can be damaged because of improper conversion and so on. Um, because of the way it assumes that the character set is always of a particular type. So that's something to bear in mind if you need to use it yourself um, and you do get this corruption. So first thing we've got to do is fetch the package and the required patch. So generally I tend to just use the HTTP links um, it doesn't really matter which ones you might find the HTTP is not working for some reason so where there are two links i.e. another link using FTP there's, there's no problem using that and normally you just need to press enter and get these SSL errors for a while until the certificates are installed So every time it comes up, do you want to continue? Just press Y for yes, and it will carry on. Right, if I just go to that screen, it's saying there's a cookie. Do you want to allow it? So I'll just do, do always so it won't ever ask me again. And it's taking me to the SourceForge page with the looks of it. So I'll need to find the link that allows me to download Right, it says this download will start shortly. Now, it may not do because that might be a bit of JavaScript that's causing that to. Um, yeah, it says there JavaScript is required for this form. So we haven't got JavaScript, so we need to find out if there's a direct link. Yeah, where it says problems downloading, I think if you press enter on that one. Do yes for the SSL error. Let's just go down. Right, it's asking for a, a mirror, but currently on this page, uh, the link that's highlighted is a direct link, so that's what we want. So let's press enter. Do yes again. Allow cookies always. And now we've got the download option so I just press D and I've just realized I'm not actually in the sources directory where I should be so this is going to go in the default location which will be the home directory for kernel text so I'll, what I'll do is I'll just save this to disk and I'll press Q to quit then I'll CD into the sources BLFS directory I might need to change permissions on this actually because it's all owned by root 
So let's just check that. Yeah, it is. So I'm going to become root the yeah the root user. And on okay, let's do this. U minus. I oh, know I know what I did. I did the wrong password. And I want to do chone kermitex forward slash sources the LFS. And what I'll do, I'll do that recursively. And I'll do it verbosely as well so you can see with the changes being made. So this will make the BLFS directory plus all the files that we've already got in there owned by Kernatex. In fact, the BLFS scripts doesn't need to be done, but the rest do. So that's that. So if I come out now, Um, I don't think, I still don't think I'll have access. I think I'll have to come out of the directory and come back in again. Let's try it. I know it has worked. That's good. Yeah. So now I can copy from my home directory the one file that should be in there, which is the unzip file. Um, and the destination, which is the current directory. And now you can see we've got that there, unzip 60 at the bottom. So now I'll get back the web browser. Just ready for next time. In fact, what I'll do is just, just put it where it would have been if I downloaded this into the right place, which is on the unzip directory. At that link and we need to get the um, patch so we can just press enter on that and it's direct link so we can just press D for download and so it's now come up with an extra option view temporary file because it's identified that it's a text file so it's allowing us to view it rather than save it but we want to do the save to disk and that's done so we'll just press the uh, left arrow as it says down the bottom to go back and we're back on the on the web page um, so what I'm going to do again is get the browser up just so we can read it first uh, read it easier I'm going to switch to my terminal where I'm going to do my building change into the sources BLFS directory here make sure I'm in the right directory I am so I'm going to extract this file CD into it and do the first command. Now I'm going to type this in because there's not a lot to type in here. In fact, a lot of this could be quite easy to type in um, without uh, risking too many errors. Um, it could be quite a lot easier than copying and pasting, but at least we have the option to copy and paste. So this first command is a patch minus capital N P one minus i and then we can do dot dot backslash uh, sorry forward slash unzip you can press tab dash and you can see if I click back here it's filled in the rest of the command so I can press enter and that's running um, I've just thought I might change the prompt so that the path um, well, the beginning of the prompt is further to the left of the screen, so I don't have to switch the um, browser. You see this cursor where it is at the beginning of the prompt is already halfway across this bit of area of the screen I've got to show um, what commands I'm putting in. So um, we can do that by editing one of these files in the home directory, if I can't remember which one it is. Um, I shall see. Okay. Yeah, this is the one with the PS in it. So if I Uh, let me have a look. Yeah, 
Okay, so the prompt is set here. So what I can do, I'll do it down here, is do something like um, PS1 equals dollar PS1. And if I can remember rightly, is it N for a new line? Let's try that. So if I log out and log back in again. Yeah, that's that's done what I want. So if we now change the sources, BLFS, you can see that we've got the cursor at the bottom here. And that's, yeah, and we can use the whole of the line, in fact, to make it a bit more readable, because that looks like it might be doing something and waiting for something. Um, I'll just modify modify what I did slightly and put in an extra little prompt like that, I think. Um, I don't actually need to log out again. I can use the source command. dot um, bash I'll see to reload it and there we have it with a, a prompt okay so um, let's go back into the unzip 60 directory we've applied the patch in fact we can recall that come on rerun it and it should say something like the patch is already applied if we try to rerun it again and there you go you can see it's it says it's ignored, it's skipping the patch because it's already done. So that's, that's done no harm, but it proves that we have actually run the patch previously and it's already got the changes. So let's type in the make command, make minus F Unix. Now we can tab this because this will be one of the directories and there it is at the beginning, Unix, make file, and then just type in the word generic Oh, that's one thing I should do as well. Set the make flags option as well, so we can get the parallel build. So, and also I'll put a space after this prompt. Uh, so let's put a space after that, and set make files. Uh, sorry, make flags equals minus J four. close the quotes so source that let's just check we've got make flags we have so let's retype this command make minus f unix make file and the word generic if you're not confident about typing then by all means do the copying and pasting just a matter of switching to the terminal with the browser in and using the mouse to highlight the bit you want to copy, switch back and right click to paste. So if I do that with this command now, I've highlighted it, switch back, right click and press enter. And that's done we've got a warning there but that's not a problem so now we need to become the root user so just do su on its own and you won't lose the directory you're in type in password for the root i will copy this command because it's over two lines and it's uh, a little bit more detail than the original make so just highlight that and right click it and as you've seen, I've just skipped over it. There's no test suite for this one. So that's that. So we've installed unzip now. So what I need to do next is to, you have to bear with me with, with this. I've got to identify where in my list unzip is and just mark it off so that I know that I've installed it in chapter 12. So I shall be doing this all the way through. 
like I say, I recommend you do it unless you don't mind rebuilding some packages, but it's not really any point. So that's uninstalled. And of course, the thing to be careful of is not to cross off packages that you haven't uh, that you haven't installed, because um, that could cause a problem where you get a dependency you think you've got and you haven't. Okay, so we can do Control D to come out of the root user. Um, we have finished now. Always best to scroll to the bottom of the page in case there's any other setup or any further commands that you need to to do. So we can just tidy this up now. So rm minus rf unzip 60 and that's that one done. So all I do now is close this one down and we've got the next package which, which is sqlite 